Hi, everyone. Uh, Roland Kay is back here to talk about identifying pictures on Wildlife Insights for the Snapshot Project. So in this case, uh, we've already uploaded the data, and it's time to go to Identify. So we click Identify Images here. You can also see this little red tab is showing how, much I, how many I have uh, need, that need to be identified across all the projects. So then you need to pick a project. We're using, in this case, the uh, demo project for Snapshot. And you'll see here all the pictures that have been identified by artificial intelligence, but not by a human yet. So we need to look at all these. Um, these are, you can see, if you look closely, these are multiple different deployments that are showing up here. Um, and so you can sort them by date taken. You can sort them by upload date that will group them into a deployment. Um, and then you can use these filters here. So I like to go by uh, deployment and just look, let's just look at one deployment at a time. So we'll look at this, um, deployment three here, and you can see all of them here. Um, uh, and when you click on, on one, it'll show you this, the sequence up close. So now you can see um, all of the pictures in this sequence. You can look at it at a larger grid size if you want. Um, and you can see what the computer vision thought it was. So it, we guessed that it was a human, uh, and this no CV means no computer vision result. And some of the, sometimes it thought it was blank. Um, and you can, in this case, uh, it's a camera trapper. And even though the camera trapper isn't visible in every single picture, we're going to mark this whole sequence as a camera trapper. Uh, we like to do the first and last one, even though it's a human, we like to call it a camera trapper so we know it was the uh, person involved in the research and not just uh, some random person, which might also be interesting for other reasons. So we're going to say camera trapper, start typing it in here, and it's there. And then we say update images. And you can see now we've got this little one indicating species one is uh, tagged in this whole sequence. So now we'll go save and next. And it's going to jump. Right now it's got a little bug where it jumps to. I don't know if you notice that. It jumped to. You can always go back. Uh, for some reason, it's jumping to. But we'll look at this one because um, uh, in this case, it's a deer. And um, it's not a mule deer, though. And so and we can identify it better than family. So these are the three guesses. Uh, we're going to edit this one and call this white-tailed deer. There it is. Now, once I've done that, that'll show up in the future very quickly, so you don't need to type it every single time. Um, in this case, it's just one, right? So group size of one. You can see it's just one animal that's moving through. Um, if there were multiple deer, it's important to mention to increase the group size. Now, if you click this little button, you can see a lot more details. For snapshot, we don't care about these. We're not recording age or sex. Uh, we're not recording individual ID. Um, but if you wanted to do this for other projects, you could. If you want to do it for snapshot, you can too. We just won't use it. Maybe you'll use it. Maybe it's useful for your, uh, your own work. So you're welcome to record that information. Um, in this case, if you had like a male and a female that you wanted to code separately, you would do add animal, and then you would add another white-tailed deer and call it a male or call it a female. Um, you can also use this add animal if there's, say, a wolf chasing the deer that's in the same sequence, then you could um, add those, uh, add multiple animals there. But for now, we've just got this one white-tailed deer. Um, uh, it is a female, so I'm going to call it a female. doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we'll say update images, and you can see now it's marked that as one. And then we can say save and next. And again, for some reason, it's jumping a little bit. But now we see um, this picture is a black bear. And in this case, it's got it right. Uh, it's got this right. So I can just say in this, I don't have to edit this one. I can just say apply to sequence. Now it's applied to sequence. Then we hit save and next. OK, so um, now we've got one. It thinks it's blank. Um, and maybe I want to look a little, a little closer to see. right? So you can, you can click on each picture, and you, you can zoom in you know, as you want. Um, of course, to look around. You can also uh, edit the photo. If you click edit photo, you can change the brightness. You know, sometimes it really helps to make it brighter. Uh, we've got a couple of standards here um, to, uh, to look to try to see it better. So you can do all these things to recognize, uh, to try to get a better idea of if it's, um, uh, if it's really blank or not. So in this case, it is it is blank, so I'm going to mark it as I could either mark it as blank here, or say apply to sequence because the computer vision thought it was blank. So either one of those will get the same result, marked as blank. Save as next. Now 
Um, this is another camera trapper, but let's let's go back. Okay, so here we've got a nice bobcat. Well, that's not a great bobcat, but let's say, all right, that's let's say we really like this bobcat. We could highlight the picture, and if we highlight the picture, that means it'll show up as our greatest hits picture. So please do that. If you see some awesome pictures, let's highlight these pictures so they you know rise to the top so we can uh, see the the really great pictures. Um, you also see in this case, it's got a bounty box, right? So the bounty box can help you find the animals. Um, you can turn them off if you don't want them, uh, but I think they're useful. Um, and if you want to help Wildlife Insights say, does every animal have a bounty box? Yes or no, that'll help them just get better bounty boxes in the future. Um, you can see some other buttons down here. If you want to download the image, you can do that. Um, if you want to delete, and then the shortcuts are, are useful, right? Because once you get going, maybe you don't want to mouse click everything. Maybe you want to use um, these shortcuts to move a little quicker. Uh, and so we've listed those there. Um, so, uh, so that's the basics of identifying the photos. So I, let me, let me fix this one. So this is a bobcat, right? So you look here, the last couple ones that I did were, were here. Um, now notice if, um, so bobcat, there it is, update images. Uh, if you can only identify something to genus or to family or to order, right, you'll notice that we have options for, you know, if we, if we want to say lynx, let's say I wasn't sure which species it was, if, if it was a lynx or a, or a, a, a lynx or a, or a bobcat, you could do lynx species, right? Or you can do, let's say you're sure it was a felid, but you weren't sure which one, you can do cat family. Uh, and so do this at, at the level of certainty that you have uh, for that. Oh, one more thing. If so, you can go to metadata uh, for a photo. You click photo, edit photo, and then metadata. So this is showing the details of, of where it was taken um, and the date and time. And here, this is if your camera's messed up, if your if your clock's messed up, and you need to fix a date and time, you can edit the date and time here, and it will shift all the pictures in the whole deployment. Right. So usually you're doing this with the first or last picture, the picture of the camera trapper that was setting the camera or picking up the camera that you have a decent idea or maybe an exact idea of when they were there that you can use this to fix if your clock is messed up otherwise. So that's where you do that. You go into one photo, metadata, change that, and that'll shift everything. Um, so another thing, um, you can select multiple photographs here on the uh, oops uh, on the um on the catalog see i can i can select two or three of these and i could identify them all as the same thing now um in some cases you that might be okay you can see like that's obviously a human right that's the camera trapper um we don't generally recommend this because uh then you're not counting the animals right and so if you're uh you know you really need to to look at the sequence to count the animals so this is a shortcut that can work Maybe in some situations, um, but generally uh, we don't recommend it. Um, the other thing you can do is if you find that, uh, you know, maybe you're finding that uh, the AI is consistently uh, doing a species wrong, you can search for that species. Like, let's say it's calling it, uh, like we had one where they were regularly calling black bears wild boars. So we could search for wild boars, we could see all the black bears, and we could kind of quickly go in and change all those species. To black bear, so that that is sometimes useful. Um, so once they're done, right? Once they're done, then they go into catalogs. So this is where you'll see all the species, all the pictures uh, from your project that have been identified by a person, and um, you've got the same sort of um, filters here. If you want to see only some projects, maybe you only want to see the highlighted pictures. Only there's that bobcat picture that we favored earlier. So that's the basic rundown. Now in snapshot. Um, you can have your students do this process of going through and confirming the species IDs, as long as you will go through and look at the catalog ones uh, to double check that they've got it right. Um, because, uh, and that's, you know, you can do this, you could, for example, do this by species and just see that, okay, yeah, these are all black bears. Um, uh, however you want to quality control it, we're expecting you to either do the identifications yourself or to go through and quality control what your students do. Um, and uh, that's all I have for today. So uh, get after it, good luck. I uh, hope you get some awesome pictures and favorite them so we can check them out. Thanks a lot.